Good morning or good day, wherever you are. Welcome to Real Time Daily Trading Ideas. We have five days a week, five different traders. We will speak about trading ideas, strategies, market screening, and maybe one or two questions from your side directly answered in our webinar. Our goal is quick and smart, but for the daily, so let's have a nice start like every day. And today it's Monday, 4th of June, 2018. Welcome from Berlin office. Before we start, of course, with disclaimer, Forex and CFDs are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposits. If you're a starter, please start with a demo account and make yourself familiar with long trading, short trading, leverage trading, and your personal risk management. If you'd like to read the full risk disclaimer, just visit one of our web pages, for example, admiralmarkets.com, and you will find everything written down there. This is me. My name is Jens. I'm the German guy. I'm talking from the Berlin office for Matma Markets via a big international broker with over 18 country offices. So my English made in Germany, but hopefully some of my quality too, but I'm not the main speaker. The main speaker is the day trader of today. Today it's Monday, so in a couple of seconds it's Jay's day. On Tuesday it's Paul's day. On Wednesday it's Giancarlo's day. On Thursday it's Marco's day. And on Friday it's Dex day. Our leading day traders live every business day to the same time. And of course, if you like to trade Forex and CFDs, you will get many benefits only with us, for example. DAX 30 CFD, one of our best sellers, with a fixed spread of just 0 0.8 points to the main trading hours. Mini lots trading, choosable leverage, MT4 or MT5, it's your choice, and many, many more. Check all them out on admiralmarkets.com. They will find also something about our regulatory background and how to contact us. You can call us, you can send us email, or visit the other channels like YouTube or Facebook. Everything is linked from admiralmarkets.com. Enough from my side. Now it's time to Jay. Good morning, good day. What's your view to the markets today, Jay? Good morning, Jens. Good morning, traders. Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, we had a very long webinar last night with my traders, and we also had technical problems. And then this morning, the link is down. And All right. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let me show my screen, and off we go. And uh, welcome to the few traders who are in here today. Uh, let's see how we can make some pips this week. Excellent. So what are the headlines overnight? <clears throat> Risk is currently on. That's the sentiment that we're talking about. Uh, and we're seeing that equities are green in Asia and uh, the yen is uh, experiencing some weakness and that's a typical situation for risk on sentiment. Why? We had very strong US jobs growth report last Friday and then the uh, Trump and Kim summit US North Korea is back on and that uh, has led to positive Asian segment, equity sentiment actually carrying over from uh, the states. So safe havens, as I said, like the yen, are currently selling off. And that also on the back means uh, that uh, the uh, Nikkei 225 is seeing some strength. But as I said, we also had um, Chinese equities up and we had um, Australian equities up. Aussie also got a boost from data. As you can see here, we beat on retail sales. We beat on company operating profits. And the ANZ job advertisement month on month came in better than expected. So um, that is carrying over and uh, is leading to some very good strength and inflows into the Aussie dollar right now. Weakest currently currency so far this morning out of uh, or in the London session is the pound itself. We had uh, just now a beat on construction PMI and the pound doesn't rea didn't react to it um, at all. So there is some inherent weakness in the pound. Canada launches WTO and NAFTA cases uh, on uh, versus the US metal tariffs. So that's a negative going on there. Trump is doing his best to mess up economic growth. Excellent. UK construction, as I said, factory orders and BOEs, and rare, they're all coming up and construction beat uh, didn't care. Currency simply didn't react to it. Uh, the trade euro cat is still open. Um, last week, we had some very negative sentiment uh, towards the um, euro. And unfortunately, I traded it in a live account. So I forgot about adding to the position um, at the lows in this account. Sounds like a cop out. Honestly, I don't care what you think it is what it is. Trade is still open because the panic was overdone in my long year, long, long years of experience. All right. I did not see um, the Italian uh, political situation as really leading to a replay of uh, end of Eurozone 2.0, so to speak because we are in a different situation than we are uh, last time. And I have learned uh, via the School of Hard Knocks that the establishment, I love that uh, phrase out of the US, wants the EU regardless of what the populace votes. 
all right? Nobody gives a crap what we vote. This thing is happening, uh, it's being pushed through, and it's almost like I'm living in a dictatorship. So it is what it is, uh, I'm not betting against it. Overnight, we saw um, here the uh, strongest currency being the Aussie dollar and uh, in tandem, the New Zealand dollar uh, just participated in this risk on environment and then the yen seeing outflows and the dollar week and the pound week. We can all see it here in the chart. Risk event starting uh, today, what's on the docket for this week? What could move the markets? So we have uh, the construction PM came in better than expected. I'm saying it for the third time, not third time, sorry guys. Uh, pound didn't react. We have uh, current account better than last time expected. So that's another positive for tomorrow night uh, or tonight. Uh, we have cash and PMIs uh, coming expected in line. And then we have the RBA. Only issue for the Aussie dollar right now is that the RBA recently said several times, we don't want a very strong currency. So we all know that they're not gonna move the rates whatsoever. We all know the economy is recovering and it's doing nicely. Uh, what we don't know is what are they gonna say in terms of uh, a strong currency, which it's portraying at the very moment as we speak. So we'll have to see that is a potential risk for the Aussie dollar on the docket for tomorrow. Then we have services PMI um, expected to come in line slightly better. Uh, we have some speakers uh, out of the BOE. We have uh, in the US non-manufacturing PMI. Last Friday, the ISM manufacturing PMI came much better than expected. And we already can see here that the services PMI is also expected to come in better than last time. And uh, we did this three and a half hour process last night uh, in the webinar on how we're using uh, this tool to find equity ideas uh, because uh, services, uh, because of the PMIs and the US equity markets are highly, highly correlated. All right, then we have GDP a day after the RBA, a day after the RBA. And you can see here, there's some strength in the GDP expected to materialize in a higher number. Out of Canada, we have uh, the trade balance and building permits. Building permits is a leading indicator and the Canadian housing market is overcooked, similar to Australia. So I'm keeping a close eye on those two numbers if and when they, uh, not if, when they come out, I apologize. On Thursday, also a trade balance and uh, Halifax HPI, I'm interested to see if the pound re may react to that. And then we have unemployment claims expected to be coming in a little bit worse. This is also a leading economic indicator. Paul also speaking on uh, Thursday evening, my time, and then on Friday, we have uh, trade balance out of China. Uh, obviously with the trade tariff uh, discussions slash war going on between the US and China, this is of interest to keep an eye on. And then we have labor market data out of Canada. We only have one slide uh, in terms of, if the computer plays along, in terms of uh, uh, commentary uh, to go deeper into the econ numbers, manufacturing, solid pace of growth in manufacturing and in services in the US. Um, that tax deal that Trump did has pushed us uh, up the curve again in terms of where we are in the economic cycle. And so we are topish. We looked at that last night uh, and we are topish in terms of where we are located in the cycle. So that means in terms of equities, mining names are outperforming, oil and gas are outperforming when we're right at the top of the cycle. All right, uh, Canadian dollar, labor market productivity on Tuesday is expected to come in a little bit higher. And Friday, the employment change. Last time we lost 1.1K and we're expected to add 17.4K in May. Now, as always, when it comes to job data, we look at the split. We do this in Australia as well, for example, between part-time and full-time jobs. And the more, the better quality type of job are the full-time jobs, obviously. So we wanna keep an eye on that when the numbers came out. In April, we had a lot more full-time jobs printing uh, than the loss and part-time jobs. So that was positive. Wage growth, year on year expected around 3% in Canada. Quebec just recently in April raised their minimum wage. So this is actually expected to be, to be feeding into this number in terms of wage growth when the labor data comes out, all right? I know it's all detailed information, but that's unfortunately the game that we're playing. Uh, Euro was all about politics last week, um, but currently 5SM and the League formed a government with a more moderate finance minister by the name of Tree. Try, don't know how to say that. Uh, good morning, Thies, there you are. Excellent to see you. And the market reacted with a relief rally in the Euro, which was my expectation. I was long Euro too early. 
happens. Risk premia is still expected to be, to be remaining quite high in the euro because the situation is fluid, as we used to say. Um, in Spain, the prime minister was ousted by a no-confidence vote and the socialist leader Sanchez became prime minister. There's a lot of corruption in Spain that went on and the voters are naturally unhappy about that. Um, it's still not expected that the Spain situation is really going to feed into any negative Eurozone uh, reaction uh, by the traders. So Sanchez votes to honor the budget, which Rajoy passed, and so that is a relief to the market. Aussie dollar, mm, we expect the rate to remain on hold, as said, the two topics that are of interest in Australia are the household debt and the overheating housing sector, uh, similar similar to Canada, by the way. So if you look at highly leveraged, um, let me go back here, for example, if you're looking at some uh, potential short plays, have a look at the Aussie banks that have uh, a bad, in terms of quality, loan portfolio, mortgage portfolio, and uh, have a look at the same situation in um, Canada. Now, we always need a catalyst why a short or a long trade may work. And in the terms of uh, Australia, we have the Royal Banking Commission interviewing the top four banks uh, precisely about this topic or these topics at the moment. And what's happening there is that we're having the housing bubble 2.0. It is the exact same thing, the exact same thing that happened in the US in 07, 08 is happening in Australia right now. Um, so the uh, commission concludes in September, but there's a lot of testimony and the testimonies are all public that are already bringing out into the light some unbelievable fraud situations within the largest banks. So mortgage documents were uh, fraudulently put into the system Again, it's all we all know this play because we've seen it 07, 08 out of the US. So we have that on the radar for the Australian economy. Uh, Wednesday GDP expected to come in higher, 2.7 uh, versus 3% on a year on year basis. And why? Because company profits, and we saw that just now, uh, they came in better than expected this morning or last night, and net exports are expected to have been strong drivers. So naturally that feeds, feeds into GDP. Monday data was strong. Um, I think that concludes the slide. Uh, hello, computer. Thank you very much. Uh, positioning. Aussie dollar on its way to a long signal. Last week, I know, I said it's a long, um, and now a situation changed, and we're continuing, but this is a long coming up. <clears throat> Swissy is a long coming up. And this these trades are based on uh, or the, the expected holding period of these trades is not swing trades. These are more like uh, almost position trades. So if and when these trigger, not if, they will trigger. They are going to trigger. They are going to trigger. And when they trigger, these are trades that will be held for days and days and weeks and weeks. So they're longer term trades, uh, just as an explanation. Volatility, we'll always keep an eye on volatility. So in the euro, it's coming off a little bit. In the pound, it's increasing a little bit. In the yen, it's coming off a little bit. And the VIX is sort of unchanged. Uh, this is for US equities, okay? Option pricing for this morning, bullish dollar yen, pound, uh, i.e. cable, Aussie, euro yen, euro pound, and euro Swissy. And on the bearish side, uh, out of the option pricing for this morning, uh, short dollar Swissy. Um, in terms of option flows, bullish for Monday, pound, Canadian dollar, yen, and gold, and bearish for Monday, Aussie, euro, and Swiss francs. So not that easy to figure out the puzzle this morning. But again, Mondays is construction day. The campaigns are being planned. Um, uh, we're using, the institutions are using volume to get into positions. So uh, then these positions are expected to be ran for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and on Friday, a square up day where you reap the harvest, so to speak, that you planted on Monday. So today is the day where they're all positioning. Mm, quick slide on the largest speculators and their dollar short is coming off. Six week in a sixth week in a row where they're reducing their short US dollar bets. But 10 year treasuries, they are extremely short. So if everybody is short, let me ask you, if even my mom is short and her dog, who's gonna short the 10 year treasuries? Okay, I hope you're getting the drift. 
exactly. Potential trade for this week, long Aussie US dollar. Aussie, solid economic, economic numbers this morning with seasonal Aussie strength, seasonal Aussie strength, and copper really strong overnight. Uh, dollar, June 13 hike by the Fed is already priced in. So that's done and dusted. Only question is, how many more hikes this year? Are we going to come out 2018 with three hikes or four hikes? And that depends. At the moment, slightly uh, um, uh, slightly questionable if they're going to go for a fourth hike. We'll have to see. Why? Because of the trade wars. That poses an imminent threat to the dollar and to the global economic expansion, which is not synchronized anymore. Chris, you know about what I'm talking. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Trade structure, two limit buy orders, and the stop loss will be around 59 pips off of the average price that we worked into this long. Risk for the trade, obviously, if the risk off, the sentiment is turning, then it's bearish for the Aussie because it's highly, uh, highly sensitive to uh, risk sentiment. And we have the RBA tomorrow, RBA tomorrow, and if they come out with a dovish hold, if they include something in their statement like, hey, we don't want the Aussie this strong, then that's going to uh, turn out to be a good entry point, in my personal opinion, to buy that weakness in the Aussie dollar. For the US dollar, obviously, if US China, US NAFTA, US Eurozone trade wars, if they, those were to come to a resolution, that would be bullish for the US dollar. It's really kind of amazing what the guy is doing. I mean, he's starting a three front war with everyone. Uh, okay. Here is the picture of the trade. We are very, very strong. Uh, we have aggressive buying away from the POC at the moment, and uh, we're already way beyond the average daily high for today's expectation. Um, question is, will there be a pullback? Of course there will be. And at that moment in time, if and when it pulls back, you want to read the chart and see if you get the correct um, reaction in terms of volume and then the reaction based on the volume of price and then happy to long that pair. Um, it's, again, I did it again. Do you see that? Oh, it's correct. And then I'm happy to long this pair to make some money. If you want to take a look at the uh, live chart with me real quick, let's see if it goes into the picture. Yeah, it's live. Okay, so the orders are in. Um, it could be that this uh, POC is holding, um, but it's still to me not cheap enough the discount is not enough for me to long this one. Let's see uh, what it's doing on a five minute. Uh, yep, strong, strong trend intact. Okay, I'm happy to buy where uh, you can take a look here where I'm happy to buy. If it goes, it goes. <clears throat> There's a longer term level right here, so I have some confluence. And this is the lower edge of value. It's just a statistical number. It's not really that significant, but it's also in the area of a role reversal where we had these highs and that could act as support. Hope it helps. Guys, make some money this week. Thank you for showing up. Small group, but uh, maybe it's growing again when more and more people realize the link. Jens, thank you for the opportunity to do this with you on a Monday morning. And all the best to my traders. I hope we make some good money. Timo, thanks for showing up. I'll speak to you in a few minutes. Thanks. Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is a new trader. Tomorrow is a day of fall. So hope to see you all again to the same time. If you'd like to see this video again or this live webinar as a video and couple of hours available in our YouTube channel. Greetings from Berlin office and all the time, good trades.